The Gauteng province total GDP for 2010 was 811 billion rands, making the province the single largest contributor to South Africa's GDP with a contribution of 33.8%, despite having only 1.4% of South Africa's land area. Gauteng also generates approximately 10% of the entire African continent's GDP. Welcome to the Corporate Profile TV show with me, your host, Sebin Teen. This is the show that puts you on a front row seat, bringing you exclusivity to all things leaders, whether in government, corporate, business, or public sector. Today is no different. I'm in conversation with the Gauteng Department of Finance, MEC, Mr. Jacob Mamabulo, talking all things Gauteng Provincial Budget for 2024-25 financial year. Exclusive to Soweto TV. You knew I had to say that. You just knew. MEC, welcome to Soweto TV, Corporate Profile TV show. Well, thank you very much. Thanks for inviting us, yeah. and we, we appreciate the opportunity. Always a pleasure. Always thank a pleasure. You. I know it's an yeah. honor. You are a very busy man. Yeah. Extremely it's... busy. Yeah, look, um, the, the work with you obviously um, has its own challenges, but yeah. um, coming to a studio like yours is also part of the work. So, sure. So it's part of our responsibility to be transparent, open, and to engage um, with the viewers. So it's part and parcel of the work we have to do. So it's, it's really a pleasure to be here. Thank you for honoring the invitation. Yeah. First things first, you are the MEC of finance within the province, which boasts the biggest market value or economy, if you like. Please explain in layman's terms, what does your role entail? Well, <clears throat> let me just confirm that, um, you know, we are very much pleased as a province that we have sustained and continue to build an economy um, that not only support the people of Gauteng, but um, an economy that carries the lives and aspirations of the people of the country as a whole. Um, and of course, even many parts of the continent depend on the Houghton's economy. And to that extent, the economy is continuing to grow um, at a rate that's highly remarkable in the sense that we, the big shoulder on which the national economy stands. And we have uh, committed ourselves to make sure that over the years we sustain the 35% GDP contribution by the province. We even seek to grow that much more further uh, than that. Our department in the province is responsible to making sure that um, we implement the spirit and letter of the constitution with regard to sustainable financial management, but that is more clarified in the Public Finance Management Act, which is the act that is responsible for the management of public finances. We also do play a role um, in supporting municipalities within the context of what is called the Municipal uh, Public Finance Management Act. Um, so the, the Municipal Finance Management Act regulates financial affairs in municipalities or the public finances of municipalities. And we do have an oversight role to make sure that uh, we support municipalities, we do oversight on how they spend their finances. Um, and of course, um, we do so by making sure that, um, you know, we, when national government allocate or transfers monies to provinces, um, we are able to work with the provincial government in allocating those monies to the various departments. That is why today we are discussing the budget of the province, how much money has been received by the province and subsequently how much money have we allocated or distributed to all the departments in the province. The last most critical part is that we do also generate our own revenue as a province. So national government give us money in what is called the equitable share, and that's what's called conditional grants, which are 
grants that are allocated for a specific purpose. Let's take a grant like what is called the Provincial Road Maintenance Grant. It's a grant that you can only use for maintaining provincial roads. So, though, so we have got conditional grants and the equitable share, but we also generate our own revenue as a province from a number of activities that we do, such as um, motor vehicle licenses, um, driver and learner uh, training licenses. Um, we do generate money from you know health services, from the gambling board. Um, so to that extent, and even ourselves as treasury, we do help um, working with financial institutions to generate revenue. So all the money that is received by the province, either out of our own revenue or from transfers from national uh, government, we, we work to make sure that it's allocated. But our role doesn't end there. We also have to support departments to make sure the money is spent properly. That is why one of the things we're saying in the speech is to celebrate our achievement of improved audit outcomes. Many of our departments got clean audits. Those that did not achieve clean audits have significantly improved their audit outcomes. So it's also an oversight function that we do um, to make sure that money is supported it's spent in accordance with the law. Um, one of the things that we seek to achieve is to make sure that we reduce what is called unauthorized expenditure, where money is spent without their proper approval, uh, wasteful and fruitless expenditure, where we don't get value for money. Uh, money is wasted, basically. Uh, we have a responsibility to make sure that, uh, you know, um, we, we, we deal with um, compliance and making sure that the spirit and letter, not just of the constitution, but of the law is followed. In that, we support economic growth. Um, so when we say we are putting 165 billion rents into the economy, that money goes into infrastructure that support and carry the economy. It goes into compensation of employees, which is to pay our staff, and they are able to use that money also to provide for their families, to participate in the economy, to buy things that are critical for them to live a good quality life. So compensation of employees is a very critical part of what we do. And of course, there are transfers that we make, like to municipalities, to entities. So, so that's in, in a nutshell. Um, you know, we engage with the private sector uh, over because our money is not enough. We've got a partnership with um, an organization of, um, uh, that's called CIBA, Chartered Institute of Business Accountants. These are the chief financial officers, the people who carry money of the private sector. So we work with them. Um, uh, and you'll see us somewhere in mid-April. Um, we will be going to the stock exchange, the Johannesburg Stock Exchange, to interact with stakeholders such as the chief financial officers to make sure that um, we grow this economy. We get to hear the voice of the chief financial officer because yeah. that voice is critical to, to supporting and to grow in the economy of the Thank province. you for bringing So our that mandate is quite, mm -hmm. it's quite huge. Um, so yeah, I think in, in a nutshell, that's, that's, that's sure. what we do. Okay, let's get straight into matters of finance. You recently presented the Gauteng Provincial Budget for 2024-25 financial year, whereby you allocated a budget with 500 billion towards the expansion of public services, township economy, and addressing the energy challenges. Please, now I need you to holistically break this down. So uh, let's... Um say to the, to the, to the viewers um, that indeed we have um, presented a budget over the three-year period in what we call the medium-term expenditure framework. So it's a, it's, a, it's a cycle of three years. We can allocate money for four years or five years. The, the cycle is limited to three years. So 2024 for the next three years, uh, we will be putting into the economy of Gauteng half a trillion rands. 
because just in the the financial year that starting first of April um, next month, that financial year gets about 165.8 billion rands. And then in the metal year, we allocating 171.5 billion rands. And then in what we call the outer year, which is the third year, we allocating, we will be spending a total of 176.8 billion rands. All that added together over a three year period goes to half a trillion rands. That's the money that will be spending in the economy of this province. Yes, that money then gets allocated to uh, different challenges. You will see in our budget that one of the departments that is receiving a lot of money is community safety. And that department, we're giving them currently 2.3 billion. When Premier Banyaza Lesufi took over as the Premier in, in the year 2022, that department's budget was less than a billion rand. We have increased it in less than, in almost two years, to now about 2.3 billion rands. And it's going to grow uh, in the next financial year. We are increasing this to about 2.7 billion rands. Let us pack it here for now and go for a quick ad break. When we come back, we will look at the economic outlook and the state that the province is experiencing subdued economic performance. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Corporate Profile right here on Soweto TV. We are in conversation with the Finance MEC, Mr. Jacob Mamabulu, as we unpack the Gauteng Provincial Budget for 2024-25 financial year, which was tabled by the MEC last month. MEC, before the ad break, you are outlining budget allocation for community safety. Yes, I was just indicating that, um, you know, in the final breakdown of how this money is distributed and allocated to departments, um, whilst health and education departments receive the biggest share of the entire provincial budget, but I think what is most exciting is just to see how we are growing the budget of the Department of Community Safety. Because fighting crime is one of the key priority areas that we have elevated in the province. When the current Premier, uh, Honorable Banyaz Ali Sufi, took over in 2022, the budget of community safety was slightly below a billion rands. In almost two years, it's exciting that today we, this, this department is getting 2.3 billion rands. The budget has grown. And we are also looking forward within the three year period, it will have reached um, 7.2 billion rands. That tells you just how committed the province is to improving spending on fighting crime. And we have already seen that uh, you know, the province has recruited um, about 7,000 crime prevention wardens. Um, and and the, 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 the statistical information shows that already they are doing good work. They are making you know, a positive impression in communities and we're receiving good feedback about the work they are doing. Uh, if you just look at uh, community safety, we, 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 have, we have bought helicopters and during the premier state of the province address, those helicopters were there. We were showcasing them as evidence and proof that the things that we commit, the things that we announce, we don't just announce them, but we also put and backed up with money and we can show to the people what we have bought. Uh, the premier announced a partnership with the private sector on CCTV cameras to make sure that we improve, you know, the um, capacity by leveraging into smart technologies to fight crime. So that also is a very powerful investment we are making. And you will actually see that we have improved also the, the allocation to the, to the Department of eGov, um, which is critical for technology to fight crime. In this budget, we have also allocated money um, for what is called um, the Operation uh, Center for Supporting 
um, you know, the law enforcement agencies on the ground, the, pri the crime prevention warrants. So, so to that extent, we are very much proud about these uh, investments that we are making to make sure that finally we can defeat crime. We are also buying cars to support the South African police services, but also the crime prevention warrants. So in all respects, from technology, from vehicles, from people, um, we are doing our best as a province to strengthen the provincial capacity to fight crime because the cost of crime to the economy is too high. I think just as a matter of emphasis, um, we, we are very much pleased about, you know, the fact that even in the midst of uh, difficulties relating to economic growth, low revenue base, low tax base, um, you know, fiscal consolidation, which basically mean uh, cutting allocations to departments, but the Department of Education and Health continue to receive the biggest budget allocations because these departments are very critical to um, social services. And also the Department of uh, Social Development itself, um, its money is also kept at a very consistent uh, level to make sure that we can support the most vulnerable. So you'll see in our budget that uh, health and education uh, and social services in general continue to receive um, a big part from the economy, I mean, from the budget allocation. The, the other most important issue is um, we have decided as a province that being the economic hub of this country, being responsible for supporting and servicing the economy of Gauteng, with the problem of load shedding that impact not just big companies, but even SMMEs in the townships, uh, households. Um, um, we have set aside 1.2 billion in the last financial year, we announced it, that we're going to do three things. One is uh, through the partnership with City Power, um, make contribution to stabilizing the grid. So end of March, when we conclude this month, we're expecting city power to say to us, how much have they gone to secure 100 megawatts into the grid from the gas turbines that the city of Jobek has, which were not optimally commissioned? So we, we are investing money into making sure that um, we don't just sit and watch the problem of electricity and we're not, we're not making a contribution to that because that function belongs to municipalities and ESCOM. But we said, as, as, the, as the economic hub of this country, we can't just sit and, 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 and not do something about it. So, so we are very much pleased with the partnership we have with City Power. Secondly, we are pleased with the partnership we have with a mining company called uh, Sibanye uh, Gold, which has allocated land parcels in its properties, and they've just given us letters confirming the availability of land. They did that in the last three weeks. They wrote to us and say, those solar farms you wanted to set up in Mirafung, a local municipality, to again, contribute to the grid, 800 megawatts. They said land is available. So now the independent power producers are now looking at the land availability uh, communication from the gold mine so that then they can continue to uh, prepare, uh, you know, uh, improving uh, energy supply. So that is going to be a key issue. And we are saying to City Power, because you are, the, you are the licensed and approved authority, we want you to buy and take this energy from the independent power producers. And then you can wheel it into every municipality in the province so that we can make a huge contribution to the grid. And then, so they're saying that's going to take up about um, uh, six or seven months to complete that. So it means by the time we go to the end of the financial year, we will have improved energy supply by working with 
city power on the 100 megawatts, but also the independent power producers will be working on the land of Sibanye to give us solar energy farms that will bring approximately 800 megawatts into the grid. We're very much pleased that our budget as well, it's used in this partnership with City Power, and of course we work with ESCO, to help those communities that have not had electricity for a long time, not because of load shedding, but because of uh, the destruction to energy infrastructure, like transformers. Our premier and MECs are on the ground, uh, you know, switching on for those communities, installing transformers and making sure that um, those communities have electricity. There are places where for five years or three, four years, people haven't had access to electricity because of the problem of transformers. We are also looking at uh, informal settlements. You know, there are areas where there's no, there are no street lights. So we are bringing high mass lights uh, that are powered by uh, solar and renewables. So that is also bringing, uh, you know, the feedback we're getting from those informal settlements and townships where they now have high mass uh, solar lights is quite huge. So, so we would like to say to the residents of Houghton that we are uh, putting our money to make sure that in almost a year, the energy situation, the problems of um, uh, transformers. Uh, um, even now, we're talking about microgrids. The premier went to uh, Alexander Township with City Power to unveil one of the most great initiatives that supplied electricity from what's called microgrids. So, so that's what we're putting our money into township economy. We are the only province in the country that has what's called the Township Economy Development Act. And we want to make sure that, I mean, we're putting in the speech how much money we're spending on townships entrepreneurs. So these are some of the things that we're doing to make sure that we support township entrepreneurs, to make sure that the SMMEs in the townships can benefit from supply chain or putting figures of how much we're spending um, on supporting township initiatives. So, so these are amongst some of the things that we're putting into the budget. Well, after the ad break, we will be covering holistically the issue of cable theft, with the MEC telling us more budget going, going towards ensuring that, you know, cable theft won't be a challenge anymore and that the grid is stabilized. Don't go anywhere. Please do stay with us. Welcome back from the ad break. You're watching Corporate Profile with me your host, Tedin Ting. If you have just tuned in, we are dissecting the Gauteng Provincial Budget for 2024-25 financial year, which was tabled by the MEC of Finance, Mr. Jacob Mamabul, last week. The MEC is still here with us in the studio, and we are still in discussion with him. MEC, cable theft is a big problem in our communities. And before I, obviously, we went into the ad break, I said before, um, you know, even if we've stabilized the grid, you know, transformers are fixed and they're up to date. But cable theft is still a big problem. How do we address this from a, from a budget perspective? So <clears throat> let me just emphasize that um, the capacity that we are creating um, to fight crime also include capacity to protect infrastructure. So we have already spoken about the role of the crime prevention wardens. One of the issues that they must look at is precisely what you say, protecting infrastructure and most importantly, energy supply, because we know that is the lifeblood of not just the economy, SMMEs, households, but it's very critical to a proper functioning community and society. SAPS, the South African Police Service, have been working very hard to deal with that issue. We have seen media reports about people being arrested for cable theft. We have seen even uh, metro-based um, uh, police, uh, the metropolis. Uh, they have also been working on this issue and we have seen reports 
whether it's in Swani, whether it's city of Jobek, whether it's a Kurudeni. But this is a matter that um, the, the entire law enforcement, the, the criminal justice system is dealing with that issue. So when we say we're beefing up and we're increasing spend on crime prevention capacity, precisely to make sure that we don't stabilize the grid, um, install transformers, and there are still other criminal activities that will undermine that work. So <clears throat> our budget for, for, for crime prevention, for supporting the economy, seeks to deal precisely with those issues so that we don't go back and forth, we make progress, and the quality of lives can improve, and the economy, because um, energy supply is critical to a proper functioning economy. And then the Houghton Department of Economic Development, obviously budget has been allocated and I know small businesses are very excited about this one. How much has been allocated? What is it going towards? So the Department of um, uh, Economic Development, um, led by MEC Motara, uh, in, the, in the financial year that is starting now in April, we are giving them 1.7 billion rands. And over the three year period, this is going to increase to about 5.3 billion rands. And of course, this deals with many issues, but most importantly to support um, SMMEs and township enterprises. We have already indicated in the budget that there are many people that are benefiting from the provincial supplier database. About uh, you know, 30,000 people have been registered, about 22,000 of them uh, are already doing business with the provincial government. So, so to that extent, I think uh, the, the budget of Economic Development Department is going to help us to make sure that um, we continue to support and benefit SMMEs because they are very much critical for job creation. Actually, many people are supported, employed, and get revenue for their families, for their households, from SMMEs. One of the issues we have raised as the provincial government is uh, the creation of the provincial state bank. And we have said the mandate of this bank is mainly, and most importantly, to support township SMMEs. There are many people in the townships that have got properties like houses, but the banks will not look at them to loan them money. There are people who are running activities, business activities in their yards. They are growing, they want to expand. Once they hear this person is in Soweto, the banks don't want to look, they don't want to support these people because the banks have got a different approach to townships. They see them as highly risky areas. Uh, the people will default. The people will not be able to pay, both because of the historic apartheid policies, but also because um, you know the, the 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 commercial banks have just completely failed to look at townships differently. They are driven by profit. And before they support you, they want to check if they're going to get return on investment. You might be running a good initiative. You might be having a good house. You might be having a wonderful opportunity to grow your business. But they, they, what they look at is, can we, can we take this uh, business or this person and put them in our books? Uh, so unless and until government put money in the townships, until and unless government make credit easily accessible to people in the townships. Until and unless government changes the criteria for evaluating and assessing the risk that goes with um, borrowing to people into the townships, making it more favorable, more flexible, more dynamic, but also appreciating that um, you know, we're trying to lift up the people in the townships that for so many years have been ignored by the commercial banks. They are not even there. What they do in the townships, they set up ATMs. There's no concrete infrastructure for banks you know, to, to service the people in the townships. Now they are moving on to electronic platforms and um, digital platforms. Uh, they're leaving out so many people who are not even there as yet. 
So, so the point we're making is, whilst we also welcome national government announcing that now they're going to set up the post bank as a, as a, as a, as a commercial bank, but we believe that the issues of credit, of loan facilities, of a deliberate hand holding people in the townships, if we don't bring that muscle into the townships, it will, it will be very difficult for people in the townships to thrive. But we're also pleased that, please, that since we've been emphasizing that our money is going into the townships, we're starting to see some changes. Already we're hearing that, um, you know, the estate, uh, real estates, um, uh, people in the property space are starting to take interest in, 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 in township properties. And, and beginning to evaluate them. But we believe we need not just a, a you know, small scale going in there. We need a huge, big capacity of the state to go there and correct the legacy of apartheid. Because if we don't, nobody will go. Once government goes into the townships with these financial instruments and support the township economy, you will see even the banks and everybody will be following. So we need government to break that... Um, wrong perception that townships are just risky. If you have a car in the township and you insure it, for sure the price will be very high because they just look at, at where it is. So the risk factor is too high. You could be paying a much more cheaper price, but just because of your location and where you're staying, fiscal area, the risk factor goes up. So government needs to come into the space. And that's why in, in our efforts, we say in the township economy is the future of this province. The potential for economic growth sits in the township. And we need to make sure that as government, we direct our resources right there. In addition to procurement, supply chain, training, reskilling. But we also need to make sure, by the way, one of the support is to make sure that people in the townships are also on digital platforms. Because the economy is moving to with the fourth industrial revolution, with artificial intelligence. Also many, many activities are happening on digital. What is the status of this um, state-owned bank? How far is government with it? Well, I think on a positive side is that the president of the republic has signed into, you know, has approved the act that will help with um, the, the post-bank being a commercial bank and starting to operate. That's a remarkable step and that has been announced. In our case in the province, we have done the, we have tested the law. What does the law say? So that is done. We are now in a process of what is called uh, meeting the legislative requirements of the Minister of Finance, the Minister of uh, Public Service and Administration. We need to say to them, this provincial bank, this is the role it will play. This is how it will function. This is how it will comply with the law. So we are at that point where now we are going to start with what is called a business case. A business case simply says, we have thought about this matter quite carefully. Please, Minister, grant us the required exemptions in law. And um, so, so we are at that point. Of, of making sure that we can get approval by national government by packaging a proper business case that when the minister look at it will say yes. This, and also it shouldn't compete with the post bank. Um, we should look at how to work together. We should look at, okay, the post bank is going this way. What are those areas where we think we can strengthen instead of uh, being competition to each other? So, but we believe deliberate, credit lines, flexible, and very uh, supportive to the people in the townships is the way to go. So we'll be working with the, with the Post Bank to look at that issue of how can we optimize the money of government to support and handhold the township entrepreneurs. Okay. Now let's go straight to the ad break. We are in discussion again with the MEC of Houghton Department of Finance. Straight after this, we are getting to the provincial pharmaceutical company and open tender system straight after this. Don't go anywhere.
Welcome back. You are watching Corporate Profile. We are nearing the end of today's episode as we speak with the MEC of Finance in Gauteng, Mr. Jacob Mamabulu, about the provincial budget. MEC, the status about the establishment of the provincial pharmaceutical company. Is it still in place? Yes, we, we, have, we have spoken to that uh, and we say exactly like the bank. Actually, we are doing this together. So even with the, with the, with the, with the state pharmaceutical company, um, we, we are now compiling the business case in order to make sure that we comply because we don't want to say to people we are going to establish a, a pharmaceutical company and then we didn't follow the law. So I know that this, um, you know, could, um, these are compliance issues. We have to follow the process. It could sound like hey, it's moving slowly, but at least when it's established, you know, there's no go back. And we have learned as a province that if you rush doing things and you don't carefully look at the law, they can come back and cause problems. So we are at that point. We, we, we are proceeding with that. But we just need to make sure that when the Minister of Health looks at our business case, they can say this matter has been thought of carefully. We are deeply concerned about shortage of medicine, um, fact that people have got to go to hospitals to queue for medication that they receive frequently, um, you know, medication that they depend on. Uh, so, so, so some of these things, the freight and logistics sectors, like if you look at food, they have moved. Food can be delivered to your house. Food can be delivered to wherever you are. So there's no reason why people who are on chronic medication should take many trips every week, every month, in and out of hospitals, standing in long queues. There are not even proper facilities to sit there. They, are, they stand in queues, exposed to the sun, to difficult weather conditions. When actually industry has moved, technology has moved, we know who these people are. We've got their records. So, and so it is in that context that we want to make sure that we relieve the most vulnerable. They don't have to be going up and down doing the same thing. So that is going to come. It's a very important intervention, but some of these things to make sure that uh, you know, we, don't, we don't set up things that are not going to last. That's why we need careful to think about them. We need to comply with the law. We need to make sure that when Minister of Health look at it, can say thumbs up, counting a story about this issue, let's give it approval. There is an establishment of the open tender system. Yeah. It seems effective because the provincial government says it has never incurred any irregular expenditure on open tender transactions. For somebody who's watching at home, what is it about? How does it work? Especially if you want to you know, do business with government. So <clears throat> that is very important because um, like the way it's say open tender. So we advertise the tender, there's a certain value. Those tenders are evaluated and adjudicated in a public space. Uh, you can go sit there, listen to the discussions, people evaluating, allocating, um, you know, deciding on, on, on which direction the tenders go. So it's done in an open, transparent manner. And what we are pleased about is we have never received any problem from the Auditor General about those particular tenders that have gone through the open tender system. So it tells you that if you want to know about a 100 million tender for building a road, you can go listen. It's, it's held like in a public conversation, like the way we do in the legislature. You can log in, you can listen, you can hear. You can go to the site, they, they run an open meeting. So that makes sure that, because remember, tenders that are run in corners, where it's dark, where we don't see what's happening. Um, that's where corruption is happening. Um, and, and that's why people end up taking, going to court to stop projects because of, you know, rumor, what has happened. But if it's run in an open daylight, uh, the tender is transparent, it's open, you can see what's happening. So, so that is part of what we call good governance. And again, it links up again with uh, the system that we have put in place for submission of uh, invoices uh, on an electronic system, uh, which also again helps with making sure that we can track and trace your invoice. We can see where it is. 
because unfortunately with corruption, people, if, if the invoices are in a dark corner, they're not submitted electronically, uh, you then depend on somebody having to move your invoice to a next step, your invoice being in the system. So, so we are very much pleased with the work that we are doing to make sure that um, you know, our electronic invoice system is currently functioning and we're expanding it, we're increasing it. Uh, we also have you know, systems like um, uh, small value transactions, about 30,000, we buy small items, tea, coffee. Those people shouldn't be waiting for a month for payment. You know, so there's what we call the PCAT system, um, where transaction of less than 50 or 30,000, we pay two, three days. So you register on that system, you are part of the system, they call quotation to submit. There's no issue with your service, you have provided good service, you are paid over two, three days. So that then you don't have to also, you know, um, be subjected to all different things. So the way we are working in the province is that we are modernizing the systems of procurement, of processing tenders, of payments, and of making sure that there's transparency and openness. That is why I make my point again. SMMEs, township entrepreneurs, they do need our support to make sure that they can also be on electronic system. You'll see in our budget, we are talking about an amount of money we have allocated to the Department of eGov to make sure that we can roll out Wi-Fi in the townships. So over and above, Wi-Fi being critical for people that need jobs, check, check where jobs are advertised. And of course, I'll come to the issue of nurses party now. But, but I think what is, what is important is that you'll see in the budget allocation that uh, the Department of ECAB is going to be rolling out Wi-Fi um, to what we call Wi-Fi hotspots in townships so that it's easy to migrate your business activities to online activities. So, so that's one of the issues. And, and as I was talking about job creation, this is the flagship. This is the most, one of the most powerful, successful, exciting, and innovative um, initiatives of the provincial government. Um, here's a job, nurse Spani, apply, you know, um, um, here's an opportunity for you. Um, instead of people asking, hey, where can I find a job? We say, here is it. So, so, so that is also, and, and you can already see, um, the Premier has announced about 90,000 people uh, are already getting something. We have um, the crime prevention wardens were the very first, 7,000 of them. And there have been other initiatives in the Department of uh, Education, um, the Department of GDART, um, also the, what they call uh, the Green Army. Um, we have got people in social development that are going to be doing uh, digital information, checking the profile of uh, needy families in communities, registering them, recording them so that there can be interventions. Um, so, so Nas Hispani is a very powerful intervention to say, whilst we are growing the economy, while we are building special economic uh, zones, SEZs, um, whilst we are sorting out the electricity issue, whilst we are supporting SMMEs to support and create jobs, but in the meantime, people need money, need income, they need to live their lives. People need hope. People need, a, need to have experience of working. So especially the youth. And, and, and as you'll see our budget and, and the premier and MECs, this issue of uh, job creation is quite powerful. I'm very much pleased that even people in other provinces are saying, hey, man, how can we get nice span in our areas? Uh, how did you do it? How did it happen? And it's, a, it's an issue of uh, you know, managing the budget, reprioritizing the budget, because as this province, we can't say what the economic hub of the country, but we can't create jobs. So is that, you know, are you still taking more people through Nancy Spani? Nancy Spani, it's it ongoing. Okay. Nancy Spani continues. Amazing. Nancy Spani, I can tell you, it's a success story that we are going to continue. And I, and I would like to say to the youth, I mean, look at one of the things we're announcing, and the Premier also spoke about during State of the Province address, is that in many cases, the companies we talk to, we attract jobs, they come in. 
Then they say, here are jobs. You find that many of the youth, their skill profiles, their CVs, do not talk to the jobs that are advertised. So hence we say, county and provincial government, TVET colleges are going to enter into a major skill revolution so that every person who says, hey, for this reason or that one, I couldn't complete my, my plumbing work. I couldn't complete my you know, electrician. I couldn't complete this and the technical work. Um, you know, um, different things that could be done, motor mechanics and so on and so on. So we're going to reconnect with Tibet. We're going to invest money to make sure that we can give a, a, you know, a, an improvement to, to the skills and make them even more suitable, transit them into workplaces. Technology, uh, you know, electronics, uh, that's where the world is going to. So, so this partnership with the Tibet Colleges, it's a continuation of Nazi's part, so that we don't just say, here are jobs. We also say, okay, there are many people who could be getting jobs in the private sector, but we know the issue of skills relevant to the industries. So we need to create that pipeline, easy movement into industries, into manufacturing, into key sides of the economy. So that's, so Nazi's plan is continuing and will continue to support it to the youth, those for whom it hasn't come as yet. They can see already, there are many people who have taken. It will come to them as well. They mustn't lose hope. It is definitely coming. Obviously, it, it can't go to everybody all at once. There's a time lag, there's time it takes. But at least you can see, hey, the provincial government of Houting indeed is creating job opportunities. So it will come. And that's what we say to the people. It's definitely coming. You will get a job opportunity and or training. All those are coming. And you see, the issue of housing is critical, you know, to residents of Houting. RDP houses, people are fighting, they are crying, literally. You know, we have an instance in Liffering where houses were incomplete and stuff like that. Um, are they complete from a budget perspective? When can people expect, you know, to occupy them? And I'm speaking from budget-related matters. And also, the issue of CSD, I know you are conducting workshops as the Houghton Department of Treasury, you know, alongside your partners for small businesses to get into a CSD to be registered. Please, if you could outline those two in closing. Yeah, let, let me start with the, with the central supplier database because I think it's very important. We do go into communities, we do workshops, we train people how does the government tender system work. But as I already said, we're seeing a huge improvement in the number of people that are registering on the database. But also we are appreciating the increase in the number of people that departments call for quotations, they do business with them. So that is also a major area that is going to improve and would like to say to um, SMMEs that we'll, we will reach out to them so that uh, we give awareness and people know that, uh, you know, tenders are not just government tenders are not something up there. It's, you can do it. Anyone can participate in a government tender. So that's why we're doing that awareness to make sure that, uh, you know, we empower people with information. It's easy for people to know how this works. And the numbers that we are seeing already are quite exciting, about 30,000 people that we have reached out, about uh, 22,000 of them already doing business with government. So, so that is a, it's a major issue. Now, the one about human settlement, um, well, I think the issues relating to status of projects, where these houses are, um, when will there be, um, you know, um, handing over of keys, and cutting the ribbon on major uh, human settlements initiatives. I think those are issues that definitely I can assure you, the MEC of um, human settlement, uh, MEC Leboha Maile will speak to when they do the departmental um, uh, 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 vote speeches or uh, speeches about their budgets, they'll, they'll give details about that. What we are excited about is that in the allocation we've made to the department, uh, we are seeing an improvement in giving people stands to build for themselves. Because remember that um, uh, if you didn't qualify for an RDP house, you are then left to the banks, and the banks then also look at 
your space and they go this way or that way. Now we're saying to people that have got money to build for themselves, here's a stand with basic services, electricity, water connections, all that is done, and then you build yourself a house. That's a very powerful, innovative way of making sure that um, uh, even those people in different income brackets can be able to build themselves houses. So there's a, there's a major improvement in that. Over and above, um, uh, you know, issuing people with title deeds. Um, uh, there are people who have been owning houses in townships, they don't have title deeds, which means their ownership of those houses is it's, it's put into doubt. And the, 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 the Department of Human Settlement is doing an excellent job in reaching out to those people and making sure that we give them title deeds. And then of course we build new houses. Uh, um, you will have seen the Premier talking about a program to improve even backyard dwellings, to make sure that um, you know, the people who are renting out in the backyard, also we can improve their living conditions. So those programs, those activities, we are financing and we're quite confident that the MECs will provide the details Again, say, now that we have been allocated budgets, where do we go? And the people can engage councillors. They can engage um, MMCs, our platforms. Our provincial government is on, on different platforms. People can send suggestions. People can call and check in human settlement, in community safety, in this department, how does it go? So we're very much pleased with the information we're giving, but MECs are still going to come, where each one will say, yes, we have received these billions of rands. We are putting them to these areas. Amazing stuff. How can residents stop buying stands from people that are not reputable, strictly government? And just like that, this is how we conclude this interesting and informative engagement with the Gauteng MEC of Finance, Mr. Jacob Mamabulu. If only time allowed, we would go in depth discussing each budget allocation per, de per department. But I'm sure that this, all that we have covered is adequate and for your own betterment. The energy crisis undermines economic growth and investment prospects. Persistent load shedding destroys businesses and leads to severe job losses. I am hopeful that through the government's intervention and all this big budget allocation, load shedding will be the thing of the past. The honor is all mine to be bringing you this exclusive interview. I remain saving to me until next time. God bless and thank you so much. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Am I free now? I'm Can a I pastor. Go? I'm a pastor.